What up, segmenters? Walter here, welcoming you back to the fourth part of our Drishti tutorial, in which I will walk you through step by step our 61811 example data set. So, um, yeah, get yourself a bucket of fried cauliflower and a Diet Dr. Coke, sit back, relax, and prepare yourself to get mumbled at for the next hour and a half. And right out the gate, and that's a nice little uh, tip and trick right there, is you can just double click on your pbl.nc file to activate Drishti Paint. Um, unfortunately, you still do got to drag it into the view to open it up. So let's stick with subsampling to bring it full screen. That full screen, get rid of the box and get all of the densities in there. And our value was 194. And ah, yes, there's our beautiful scan that we started in the last video. Um, I'm going to change the save frequency. So that way it doesn't bother us. And yeah, let's get to it. So now, kind of like eating a cow, you don't really know where to start. I find the best way to do things is to just click through the different graph views and see where there are large chunks of the vertebrae that are isolated. That would make it easy to do like repeat processes and stuff like that. So keeping our eyes on these two sections, we can see it gets pretty isolated here, but ooh, you can see it gets kind of hairy over there. Um, from this point on, it looks pretty, pretty separated. Um, so yeah, we, it would be easy to tag this region and then do a repeat process going backwards or up this way to kind of fill out the rest of that. Or you can see that little chunk there. That's right where the two vertebrae meet. That's going to be really hard because it looks like a piece of this bone right here. And then it goes a little further and it kind of morphs into the other one. So the tag will want to stay on that piece. So I'm going to not mess with the, the X view. Let's take a look at the Y. The Y, oh, definitely seems clearer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks pretty darn nice. Doesn't look like they even touch right there or right there. So, oh, yeah, it runs into it right there, but we can probably take care of that um, in another view. I think how to normally go about these is to start with large areas where you're, you'll be using small lambda values and big box sizes, and then um, gradually do more and more detailed work is how I normally do it. Um, so let's see. We can start this process around right here. This is all that vertebrae that we want. So let's go ahead and get into it, make some marks. Press T to get that all tagged, yep. Oh, and actually, this is not part of something that we want. So I want to press R. And I think what I'll do is lay down a little piece of tag 255 right there. Command shift the crosshairs out of the view. And let's press T again. Oh, yep, and see it, it avoids that spot now. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. This is the direction that we'll be repeating the process in. So, um, we could go ahead and try to do a shift T, but I just want to keep an eye on this little thing. And then when it connects over here, our lambda value will probably have to go up. So that way it doesn't take 
the whole thing and see how this is getting smaller. I'm going to lay down a new tag, 255, that's farther up, and then tag the rest of that and see it still does a pretty good job. Um, let's keep it going. And now it pretty much looks like that piece is part of this vertebrae. Um, yeah, no, it's, it stays a little bit, so let's color it in and then tag the rest of this junk. Some little things in there that need to be tagged. And let's erase this tag. Actually, I'll press escape because you can see there are those little things that were going to stick around if I had just uh, done the right click erase function. And this pretty much looks like part of that. So I'm going to call it good and we'll check that in another view further down. So this is looking good. Now let's see. Oh, okay. This is always going to be part of our the vertebrae that we want. So, and it looks like from after that, this is all pretty much stuff we want tagged. So this could be a time to do a repeat process. Um, I'm just going to go through and see what lambda value um, will, will prevent this thing from being co colored as two when there's tag. So I'm going to increase that and see that's not going to want to go. So you know what actually might work is the um, the 255 strategy. Let's see. Oh yeah, Lambda does pretty well there. And it looks like it'll continue to just keep there. Okay, cool. So nice. We can just leave a little swatch of that there. And then Let's do an option to find box right there. We can quickly scroll through and make sure, oh, see, it's going to cross right there. So let's expand this box a little bit more. Um, comes close up there, but that'll be fine. Um, ooh, see, we might run into some trouble over there. So. I think because of that little area right there, I'll actually assign a shrink value of like three sounds good to me because the lambda is still pretty low. So it'll be like really aggressive and filling in. But if a little piece like breaks off, it'll disappear pretty fast. So let's try it out. Oh, and I forgot to look over and see if any of our desired vertebrae will come underneath this paint. Oh no, it just barely misses. Oh my gosh, how perfect is that? Okay, cool. So let's do copy tag. Yep, that shrink value looks all right. Shift T in the forward direction, I think is what we wanted. We want it to go that way, which is of course forward. And here we go. Oh, there's a little piece right there, but see with that shrink value, it disappeared. Um, oh, you can see it's shrinking there as well. Doing pretty darn, pretty darn well. Oh, it's staying around there. See, it took a little bit long for it to disappear there. Um, and this is actually going fine or maybe not because I think that is all undesired vertebrae. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna stop that because that is a lot of business to deal with later. And here's that auto save, that can be so bad. So let's go back to where this started. Oh, it was like from there. 
is where it broke off. See this thin part right there is actually not part of this vertebrae. So to get rid of this, I think the most effective way would to do a shift R. So what I'm thinking. So from like this point on, let's shift R and let's go forward. Yep. And that got rid of all of the tagging on the undesired vertebrae at once. Okay, so let's go back to where it was good. And right here is where we stopped. So I think what will work, because our desired vertebrae is going from like extending a long way over here to just getting smaller and smaller, um, the best way to go about this, I'm feeling, is to put some good old 255 right there and that'll prevent the red from going over there. So because I'm not gonna press P right now, it won't erase what's already there, but it'll keep it from going over into that area, I'm thinking. So let's do another define box. And now let's try our Shift T in the forward direction again. Oh, and guess who forgot to use the copy tag function? So let's go ahead and end it and start again. See, this is the this is the fun of Drishti right here. Realizing you messed up, watching it auto save, and then doing what you actually want, going back and doing it right. Okay, so you, we can really start from anywhere in here. T forward. Okay, now let's keep an eye over here. Oh yeah, working beautifully. It's covering in the desired vertebrae, but staying on the one that we don't want. Oh, but actually see, I think that's still not desired craparella over there. Let's get off of copy tag. See, it's pretty hairy of what is what over here. In this area so what I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase all this junk I'm just gonna go in and manually tag for a few slices and we can know oop see oh and now we gotta I think I'm gonna um, press R and see that got rid of that thing too but it'll be easy to tag that piece so I'm gonna put some more of that down there. See, it's still pretty aggressive, so I think I'll decrease the box size. See, this is what I'm saying is there are probably other detailed areas that, or non-detailed areas that having a large box size in Lambda would be preferable. So it's good to go through, but because we're here, is, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do this detail work. I think that's part of what we want. See, it's really hard to get in there. And see, I have a hunch that in another view, it'll be really easy to distinguish what we want and what we don't want. But why not go ahead and take care of it now? So I'm going to color in that and. See, I think from here on out, they look pretty separated. So it could be a good time for a repeat process, but I like to just keep an eye on it if you can, you know?
if scrolling through and just clicking every one is doing all right, then okay. Oh, see, we it still kind of touches there, but if we do like a shrink of one or a shrink of two, I think it'll take care of that. So let's do copy tag forward and see what that does for us. Oh, see, it kind of left a little piece behind there, but yeah, this is doing a good job. And now that nothing is over there that we need, we could option drag the box over. Ah, oh, shucks, messed it up. I was trying to grab the outer rim of that box to make the process faster, but I accidentally defined a new box and that um, ruined the repeat process because there was nothing to tag over there. So let's get rid of the box that destroyed it all. And let's do a new one and make sure they don't go outside of the bounds of that box. Nope, we're looking good. So no shrink because those are completely distinct entities. Shift T forward, and it should finish pretty, pretty quickly. Nice. You can definitely drag this part down. Let's see, it'll speed it up greatly. Nice. Cool. Let me end it there. And that is actually a good save point. So if it didn't save, I should go ahead and save it there. Great. And we could go to the 3D model and crash the program. Yes, of course. Um, sometimes that'll happen. So oftentimes when you're switching views right beforehand is a great time to save. But since that repeat process saved right after it, we were good. But I was just going to try to see if we could see the work that we had done on the 3D view. It's always nice to feel like you've accomplished something. So, Dristy Paint, yes, it did quit unexpectedly. Let's report it. Yeah. Send to Apple, sure. I don't know what they'll do with Dristy Paint information, but... Okay, look, you can um, see that's the stuff that we did yesterday, and it oh, looks like we uh, made some good progress over here, right? That's where all that hairiness was. See, I think maybe in here there's going to be part of a vertebrae, the other vertebrae, or the part of the rib more like that we need to go in and erase, but yeah, good progress. So let's go in which we were in the Y view. That's a pretty quality view. So this is where we're working and things got more complicated from here. Okay, yeah, see the condyl is definitely a region where these connect um, where you'll go in and just do that region. But up here, it looks like things stay pretty, oh, beautifully isolated. So, oh, and then we can do the, like, basically the reverse of what we did on the other side. As in, now it's just like the opposite view. Um, we can do that. Okay, so... I'm thinking we can start from way back here and just do the upper part. So let's define a box, say like that, and see. Oh, crosses that a little bit. So, oh yeah, crosses it a lot. Let's drag it all the way up. And we'll just be focusing on this upper part. We'll see. We'll see how far we can take this one. One tagging session. 
Oh, see, this is probably going to be a little bit of a problem. We'll hand walk it through. So let's go ahead and put some tag down. See, I don't like that. So let's put 255. And this is doing a okay. And it looks like from this point on, close to this point, it stays pretty isolated. See that, that area right there, we're going to have to go into another view and see what is actually the vertebrae we want and which is the one that we don't want. But right now, we can do copy tag and I'm going to try no shrink. And let's see, the area that we want to go is backwards. Oh, you can see, see that little chunk right there? That might give us problems. So I'm going to just cut that out because if it goes over here, it could seed that whole area. So if we do a repeat process all along here, does help us out a lot so it will fill a lot of matter so let's do it um, backwards okay and see oh shoot I didn't change the save frequency so it's gonna like stop us every 50 or whatever operations it does. Let's see if you can change the save feature while it's gone. Oh good, oh man, I just changed it to five. Okay, let's try to do 500 in the meantime, so that way. Ah oh, jeez, okay. I wonder what would happen if you change it to zero. Oop, oh no, there's a little piece over there. And yep, it is seeding that whole area. I didn't catch that. So, what I'm gonna have to do is go back. Okay, this is where things got bad. So let's just define a box over here and do Control R backwards. Okay, cool. And now it's the end of that. See, the repeat processes can be very powerful and they can also destroy a lot. So sometimes it actually is better to just go slice by slice. Um, but that's a call that you, you develop that sense of when to go slice by slice and when to let Drishti do its thing over time. Okay, so now that it's not connected, we could actually include all that junk over there and it's not going to matter. Hmm. Let's see. Let's just see what it does. I think it'll probably be too powerful really fast, but Oh, and you know what else is going to happen? Is as this grows, it won't get all of those little pieces. So, something that I might do is just cover this in paint. So that way, as it goes through, like as it goes this way, hopefully some of those little little chunks that would be missed will hopefully get got underneath that painted region and yeah it won't really affect anything else so that's cool all right let's do control tag oh wait let's remember the copy tag got it that time in the backwards direction boom see it kind of missed those little things but uh, it'll be easy to go back and fix
and actually after it gets out from underneath this we can oh no we can't press escape because oh I didn't even see that that was going on um, because I would end the process but you could left click while the process is going and erase tags during the repeat process which is a little hairy but it works okay so now let's get rid of everything the paint and our definition box and not have tags copied anymore okay so see even that just tiniest connection right there was enough to <laughs> cause this whole thing to be colored mm. so you know what, I think it's easier to just go through and do a bunch of R's ourselves instead of having to sit through the autosave. Okay, so now let's move the crosshairs. We can just put, oh, see it wants to take a lot. So let's just increase it by one and see how much that helps. Oh, there's more connection, so we increase it more. And let's cover these little things over there. Make sure they get all tagged in this one go. And we can just kind of walk it through here. Because the lambda value that you need changes, sometimes it's easier to just manually set it at everything. See, like that would have happened and gone for a few slices at. Um, and during a repeat process, so instead we can just see how it goes with us watching over it at every slice. And we could actually extend the paint down over here because it's pretty much done attaching as long as it doesn't extend too far up here. Nice, yeah, see it's, oh, it's isolated, but over here it's, let's just put a shift dot over there and it'll know. It'll know to keep off that area now. And I think this piece is going to break off at some point. And is that part of the vertebrae? No, that's part of the other vertebrae that we don't want. And I'm just going to put a preliminary piece of 255 over there as well. Oh, and see, that I think could be part of this. So that's actually the last place. I'm probably going to let it tag over there. But we do want it to tag right there. So let's actually get rid of all this and decrease the radius. And let's see how it will do if we put down the tag like that then tag everywhere else. It's probably going to want to go over here to which we can put down a nice wall. 255. We can encourage it. We can go all the way there. Oh, but see that little crux right there. I don't think that's something that we want tagged in this tag. Here I'm just going through the slices and pressing T and then I uh, erase all the paint with escape and redraw it as stuff becomes more clear and just start pressing T again. It looks to me like if we just possibly put some 255 here, oh, it'll run into it there, so let's not. Um, I think it'll get to a spot where a repeat process will be useful yeah when we get to here but until that point let's just keep chugging away with our manual process where this goes here we could actually, can we put 255 down and then start at the beginning? Oh no. See, I'm seeing if we could start way back here and do a repeat process. But 
it won't tag that little region right there if we did that. So let's just keep keep chugging. See, it knows this connection is a dubious area, so it's kind of scared to go there. Which is kind of nice. You know what? I think this problem could be remedied by a smaller box size with a little more detail. Oh, no. See, it just made this a lot more selective. Um, so I'm going to R that, and I'm just going to put 255 on this little tip and increase the box size back up to 5. Wait. Oh, we don't want this to be tagged over here. Right. So I'm just going to redo that. Press paint. And erase that little chunk. Okay, let's see. If we were to do a repeat process in the backwards direction, looks like everything we want will stay pretty isolated. Oh, and that's where we already did stuff. So Hmm, let's see here. I think it could work. I'm down to try it. A repeat process. Let's see if we do some 255 right there. Oh, see, it's going to run into this. So, what if we erase just along the line? Ooh, that stays pretty constant, pretty nice. So, what I think to do, oh, see, I want to, I want to keep that paint, but not the other ones. I'm just going to try to eyeball where it was. And then let's see if it'll run into it. Ah, perfect. Cool. So, let's start from this one and let's do a shrink of one just in case it ever jumps over there now uh, well, let's do let's do three copy tag and cross our fingers and the this is backwards okay with the finger hovering over the escape key. Oh, see that's tagged, but we can go in and solve that pretty easy later. And yep, it's, it's behaving over there. And ooh, we're gonna have to watch that direction. You know what, I'm just gonna put some 255 as this is going. Oh, nope, it invaded, I'm gonna cut it off. See, this would just kind of spread even with the 255 that I started to put down. Maybe if my computer was faster, it would have been better, but it got over there even with the shrink of three. So let's go ahead and cut that off, do the escape. Ooh, and where did that start? Okay, like right here. Hmm. I think I'll just go for the erase instead of doing R. I'm just going to paint all of the area that it bled over into with 255 and then I'm just pressing the P to confirm that I don't want any of the tag that is underneath it. Oh, I went a little too far so I'm going to erase with right click and see it kind of grows with each slice. Okay, but it wasn't there for long, so up until there, things were going pretty well. So now let's just do it manually and see if we can get it to not bleed over. Yep, see it's scared of that little connection area. And we don't want it right there. So I'm going to press it. Ooh, nope. Increase that. 
Uh, see, now I don't want to have to go in and draw that line. So let's do reverse. Let's bring it down to 14, but I will draw this line. That's not so bad, but it'll go ahead and fill in all up to that, you know. Oh, and see, this is where we already did a lot of work. So let's just scroll through and see if there are any pieces that owe yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a pretty detailed line close by and then just press T. <coughs> Didn't want that to happen. So we can just redraw this, redraw that. I'll also put a line here. Now, let's see how T does. I hope you have to see it's scared to go anywhere close to that 255. And let's see, if we were to do a repeat process here, that would look quite all right. But I think we already have most of it colored in, actually. So let's just check on those. Oh, and see, that's going to mess it up. So we just want to fix those few over here. So actually, I'm going to get rid of all the paint. And let's just do a little box right in here. Because these are really the only areas of concern. And fill it in. Oh. Yeah. OK. And now that's the work that we already did, and it looks pretty good. So let's do a quick save and check how things are looking on the 3D view. Oh, what? It doesn't look like it has much changed at all. Let's hit the update. And oh, we get that nice candy cane pattern. So. I think it actually is worth seeing what we have done and what we still need to do to go ahead and quit and then just reopen it again and hopefully it'll get rid of the candy cane because we need to see the areas that we should one go back and redo and two the problematic condo area. Oh yeah. Oh, so nice. So as you can see, we've done, I'd say like a good, what, three-fourths of the volume of it, but we still probably have a lot of work left to do because that inner condal area is one of the hardest. Let's hide all and just ooh, admire our work. See and We'll probably have to go through and retouch these places too where we couldn't really tell which was which. Oh, right there, you can tell that there was definitely like one or two slices that we accidentally tagged what we shouldn't have. But this inner, kind of missing a lot of uh, area right through the center. So let's go back, show all tags, and Take a look in the Z view. We haven't ventured into the Z view in this tutorial. Oh, look, you can definitely see. See here, it's so much easier to tell that we didn't get this piece, which is actually part of our vertebrae, but we did cover a lot of that. Um, oh, yeah, so we'll have to go in and do some doctoring here. But one thing, so I think what will be useful in the Z view is getting this box filled in. Um, we can do some more work with large lambda values in the middle of this vertebrae. So if we go backwards, it should all fill relatively well until we get to here. And then that's where the difficulty starts. So let's go all the way back to where you can't see the beginning of the first, or you know, the, the foreign condyle. And let's 
tag all that. Tag that. Oop, that's probably not part of it, but whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Erase it. Move the crosshairs out of the way. And then let's do. Oh, yeah, change the save frequency to a million trillion degrees. Uh, lambda box size, I think, is pretty good. Let's see what happens when we do a shift T in the backwards direction. Oh, shoot. Guess who forgot to copy the tag? I'm sure, y'all, hopefully, y'all are faster learners than I am. Okay. And change the shrink to zero because, as you can see, like as we go through, there's nothing um, where we never encounter a foreign vertebrae until like here, and even then it won't be connected. So I'll just end the process like right at this slide when it starts to be connected, and that's why we can keep the lambda value really really low and shrink at zero um, and box size really really high so backwards. okay and hopefully this will tag the entire middle doing well and once we see that this disappears, we could shrink the box and make it go faster, but I saw what happened last time, so I'm a little, a little iffy on that. And it won't be too long. Oh, that little piece will probably have to go in and fill what was going on beforehand. And we should be nearing the end of our blissful, oh, yep, see it started to already go over there. and which is <laughs> crummy, but what I think could work is to just drag the box up and over to there. And it's not copy tag, but let's just press R. Oh, and erase only that little chunk right there, of that one piece that we don't want to be tagged. Oh, perfect. And I think we clipped a little piece right there, but that's negligible. Okay. And then let's actually make a tighter box. And we can do a bit more work with the settings that we have. Coloring all this in. Until actual contact between those two pieces is made. At which point, yep, we can um, raise the lambda and do different box sizes and whatnot, but there's actually, I think we could do a few slices. Oh, here, let's see what happens if we make this wider. We'll just tag more. No, see, it backed off, which is interesting. Let's increase lambda quite a bit. See, it's not sure what it wants to do in that area, so it'll kind of stop and ask us. Ah, oh, shoot. And erase some stuff over here. So let's increase lambda and actually I need to color in what was taken over there. So actually I think I'll make the box a little narrow on that side. Press T and see is this part of our vertebrae? Yeah it is. So we can see what we can do. Ooh, no. I'm going to do 255. Yeah. Does an all right job. And see how it's starting to get really, like, just detailed in a pain. I'm not going to work in a Z view on this. What I have found 
to work pretty well is to now go to the, I think it's the Y view. Actually, let's save our work before we switch views, just in case it crashes on us. Great. Oh, yep. See, good thing we saved, right? Otherwise, we'd have to go back and do all that work again. So open it back up. Drag it in. But on the bright side, we'll probably get to see report. Yes, send to Apple. We'll probably get to see the work that we've done since the last time it crashed. Which is always cool. So let's do box. Come on. Oh, sometimes it doesn't want to get rid of the box. I think, wait. Oh yeah, so you can uncheck the box here. If, for some reason, hotkeys just sometimes don't work like it was not working for me there. Huh, we've missed a section right there we can see. Wait a minute. I thought we did all of that here. Let's Let's update it. Oh, no, apparently we haven't. Oh, because I think what we did is we did all up to here, and we accidentally colored <laughs> that part of the next vertebrae. So let's zoom in on that. Just a simple command click, and let's undo that. Oh, see, I thought, ah, uh, messed myself up. I thought that that was the, the little under fin of the one that we we're working on when it is not so yeah this is a good time for repeat R yeah start from there little end just to make sure it doesn't clip that shift R and the what is this backwards yep and what is happening Nothing is happening, and escape is not working, so I'm just going to exit that out because I was scared that the repeat process of R would make a box through everything else that it would um, encounter. Yeah, so. Now is a time when Drishti kind of got a mind of its own and couldn't really stop anything. Who oh, should have been suspicious when you know couldn't um, work anything with hotkeys. So let's. You know what? It might be easier on the X view. Nah, the box is gonna have to change. Let's do Z. Yeah, right there. Okay. Command click the crosshairs away. Option to find the little box that we don't want anything in. Oh, and you know why that repeat process probably, it probably wasn't going to do anything actually because it just noticed I was working in tag one and we went to R all of tag two. So let's do shift R and the backward direction like this and you can see it'll actually erase what we want now. Great. And it actually stopped that time. I want to see and make sure it got to the very complete edge of that little thing. Yeah, no red to be seen. Great news. But so we did all the way to here in one direction. So let's go the opposite way. Oh, wait. Oh, there was where our slices stopped. Um, see that little cutout thing in the 3D, like right there? I think this is where that is. We can fix that with some quick um, scrolling through and pressing T. Oh, and we reached it, so I don't 
know why that didn't fill on the reverse or the repeat process. Let's scroll through and see. Um, I'm looking, trying to find our fin. Ah, yes, okay. Right here. Ooh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is tag that and see it's going to keep keep its distance from anything else till the very end. So let's do escape and no shrink. Copy tag. Control T in the backwards direction. And that'll color the fin that we actually need because it's easier to do in the Z view. So why not go ahead and do it? Oh, didn't change my save frequency, but apparently we haven't gone through 50 cycles of anything yet. Oh yeah, see it reached the end. See, this is actually a kind of a bummer scan because <laughs> We reached the final tag, but obviously this was not done existing. So let's say work, and now we can go and see what we've done in the 3D view. Okay. Let's update it, and hopefully these two will switch. Boom. Yeah, well, you could tell. If it wasn't candy cane striped, that'd be switched, and hopefully this would be filled in. So now it appears that we have most of our vertebrae done at separate the condyl regions. And here is where the pro techniques come in. If you've sat through this video this long, I congratulate you. We're about to get into the juicy stuff. So yeah, it's this view that I want right here. The Y where is um, cut down the middle of the vertebrae. This is, I've found, I think, the easiest way to do these uh, very troublesome regions. So, first, what I'm going to do is I think I will start on this end. And Do this area. So I'm actually going to see when it gets the largest and I'm going to set the box for all the work that I'm going to be doing um, early on. So yeah you can see everything over here that I want to tag is within that box. And we could actually zoom up on it a bit. So let's get to the very beginning of that line because we don't want that there and we don't want that line there either but I don't know where these come from so huh that's weird yeah I'm just gonna scroll through and press T see now it is like lickety split fast you can I wonder if sometimes when your computer is on its A game if you can scroll and T faster than the repeat process does. Ah, shucks, let's see if that, yes, uh, silly me, change to a million, what am I thinking? And now I just scroll through the slices, pressing T, getting rid of that line, hope, don't want to tag that, so adjust the box and keep going. And now we will start getting into the fun zone. Okay, and you can actually tell that this part right here is part of the stuff that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and go backwards and tag all of that. And now, yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and increase lambda because we won't want it pretty high for it everything that we are going to start doing 
And I'm going to decrease box a little. And that helped out a ton too. Let's see, it's kind of hard to tell. Like maybe this is something that we want, but I don't know. Oh, see, now it doesn't. <laughs> it's just using that little tagged area. It's become very timid in its low box size and high lambda value, but I'm going to go ahead and make the call that that ring right there is something that we want. And so you can see you can kind of extend the border in very small increments as you go. So my strategy for doing condal regions is start where it's the smallest, lay down your paint, and then scroll through to where it gets bigger and you'll just ex keep extending the border further and further out because the paint or the tag underneath um, really likes to you know like stay together and group things together so if you tried to do that over here and like just do the outer rim it would tag the whole middle of this so I'll show you how to do deal with that in a second but Let's just go ahead and do everything, do the basic strategy over here. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do 255. Oh, yeah. See, that did things pretty well. There will also come a point at which it will start getting small again. And at that point, it's going to be hard to like decrease your paint that you've laid down every time. Like you'll have to, you know, like go in and like right click erase it all and see, look, it's starting. Yeah, this is the point where our paint will start going over the boundaries that we actually want. So what I'm going to do is basically try to meet it in the middle and go to where it's the smallest um, smallest portion of stuff over here that we want. Let's do T, see what happens. Yep, we can do a little more. Maybe put a little bit more paint down. Let's see, we can begin to see it emerges, but we're, it's still hard to see in this view. So we'll go into another view and It'll clear things up later, hopefully. There, oh, and look, yes, we reached the other zone. And now we have that condo pretty well done. Let's save our work. And I'll show you why smoothing is very important to segmenters like us. All right, so if we open it up in a 3D view, hit update. Oh, we can tell we got the fin nice and candy cane. So let's go ahead and close out open it up again so you can tell when we open it up now um, we got the fin looking good but you can definitely tell the condyle is made up of slices all going this way and built going perpendicular to that so if you command click um, we can go to our X view here and zoom in to that area and ooh, see you can uh, definitely tell that it's all composed of you know slices in the other direction, which is how we did make that region. So now let's fix it. Option to find a box, adjust the edges there because you know we're about to do some smoothening, which is a destructive process. It'll work on all red regions that it comes across. So. Let's uh, set our smoothness value and keep going. 
Oh, maybe I'll up it to two. Oh yeah, and see that kind of groups them together better. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and see gradually it should become more organic and the lines will group together. Let's try a thing of three, how about, or four. Okay, yeah, all right. Now we're cooking with oil. See, it's erasing all the straggler lines and just kind of like averaging them together, which will ultimately lead to an incredibly silky smooth surface of the condyle. But you can also see it's kind of erasing the barely edges of that over there. So we could actually, nah, I think it's worth it to just keep on. Oh, and save frequency is there to remind us that we need to change that to 1,000. Yeah, nope, forgot again. Great. Okay, and now we do S. And we could do a repeat S, but I don't know. It's kind of satisfying. And also, I like to just keep an eye on what we're doing. See, you can like close the box more here so that we're not erasing like a tiny edge over on the other side. Zoom in with scroll and update that. Yeah, okay, see what is happening here is it's the candy cane thing happened, but just um, on like taking away stuff. So I'm actually gonna exit out. There we go. It's, um, we still got that line there, which we could go in and see what is up with that later, but see now it's much more spherical and we could see it's pretty chopped on the edges there just because of where we decided to start or not. So we could actually go into another view like this one and see where the lines are coming from. Oh, so you can kind of see it like right there. It's like that, that could be more evened out. Um, but otherwise it looks pretty darn good in most other views. And what we could do, see like this is kind of wonky. Like you can tell these pieces are like part of it. You can just go in and press P from way back when. And that'll just paint right underneath the paint. And that could even out some of those lines that we see on the edges. But yeah, okay. You could also erase just these things because they're not connected to anybody. Yeah. Mm. Well, there are also some little floaters around. I don't know what those are doing here. So let's erase that. With 255, you just shift, left click, drag it over and then press P and it will erase some debris up there, some more debris here. And that's just a load of stuff that we don't want. And yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. So for now, I'm going to call, oh, save our work, could have lost everything. Okay, so let's check out the 3D view, and I really want to know what's going on in that little depression right there. So command click and then go to the Y view, 
Let's scroll over and see, move the cursor out of the way so we can see what's going on there. Ah, see there are a few slices where it just raises up all of a sudden for seemingly no reason. So what we can do is draw a very detailed line of 255 which covers up that little raised area. Go through, hit P, and yeah, it should get rid of all those now. So it, it looks pretty good. It might happen again in that area a little bit. You can see it goes down and then up um, as you scroll through and I think I'll probably go back and try to fix that later but it really depends on how exact your analysis is go to decide if you need to address those or not. Now let's go over here and do the other region. Start off, it's option to find a box. Um, let's change the save frequency, just remember that. Let's do box size, what did we have it at before? Like 15 when we were doing the other condal and the box size of like four. Okay, if we go in here and press T, see how it was, it, it followed the line fine until we added this little chunk over there. And then once you try to go to the very tip of this, it colors in all that. So we could do a shift 255, but see it's just like really resistant and it'll change every single slice. It's a real pain to have to do. So that's because, you know, like the paint wants to like stick together and group things just like how we did it on the other condal, um, it was really easy to go in and do this region, right? So, what I have um, come up with, the best technique, is to use my trash tag, get a little tag eight, make some Spider-Man patterns up in here. So, what I'm gonna do is pretty much do the reverse or do the same process that we did on you know this section but over here on the vertebrae that we don't want and you go through and paint the whole thing and then you smoothen it out and then that tag will remain there as we go through and um, tag the red around it and the red will not invade the blue and um, yeah it'll make it a lot easier so let's just begin doing the same process we did before, adding a little paint here and there. Overfill with the blue, like see that? When we go back in with the red, that will be red and then you'll have like a little projection from the bottom of your area, which you don't want at all. So. so it's definitely a good idea to be less conservative with the blue than we were with the red earlier because the blue areas that we're filling in now are determining all of the cartilage and stuff in between that the red will not fill later when we go back through this area. Okay, and now it's looking like our thing is starting to decrease. So let's go to where it is smallest on this side and do the same process again. Great. Now, get rid of our box, and now let's go to the 
X view, zoom in, and we really don't have to draw a defining box for our S function because the only things that are blue is stuff that we want to smooth. You feel like there's nothing over here that we like can really care about or anything. Okay, great. So let's go back to the, which cut is it in? Yeah. Let's command it there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is the graph cut that we want to be in. Perfect. So let's go completely to one end. And, oh wait, no, no, no. Actually, what we want to do is start right here in the middle where it's at its peak. And we fill in and gradually it'll get smaller and smaller and we just fill in the paint around it. That's, yes, that's what works. Okay, so let's do a pretty, pretty big lambda and change to check tag two. Tell it that we want it to go all the way to that corner. And let's change box size to five, we need six, great. And it'll fill in that corner and all around. So we could probably do a repeat process, but again, I like to keep my eye, oh, see how it kind of stopped there? Keep my eye on the process as it goes. So now we need to go the other way and fill in the rest of the the red. You can zoom in and see now. See, that's a little jaggedy, so let's change smoothness down to like one because it actually follows the line really closely, but it's just a tiny bit jagged. And we don't want to be smoothing also everything else out a ton. I'm actually going to increase it to two because I find myself pressing it multiple times. And maybe up to four. You can see that will look pretty bad. Great. Let's save our work and see what we've done. All right. Let's go in and time for a satisfying update. Boom, candy cane. Yep. And oh yeah, look, you can see it there. It looks, you know, like that fit perfectly in there, right? And then check this out. Get the zoom and then 
Unclick this and then, oh yeah. Oh dang, that's nicely done. That is quite nicely done. There's a little swath right there that could be smoothed out. But, yeah, I think we did a pretty fantastic job here. You can just do a once over. Yeah, that, that condo looks so smooth after we went back and smoothed it. Um, all that's left, oop, there's a little chunk missing right there in the neural spine. You know, just a simple command click. And we can see where we went wrong. Maybe that's a chunk missing of the actual bone. Or we can just go fill that and it'll be no problem. Yeah, all that's left to do is do file and then export tagged region and then you can go do a photo shoot in Drishti, make make some plates from all different views and yeah, it'll be great. One one thing that I have always Found to make sure the scans are really nice and clean is to go back through not just the condyl area but everywhere where the vertebrates connect like right there we can zoom in and see look there's like a few slices that we might have accidentally tagged that we could go through and erase just to make it uh, cleaner there are some lines and excess stuff right there that some you know 255 could make smoother and Oh yeah, right there, I remember we, we caught some of the rib that we didn't need. So, command click and look at all of the graph views, see where you can really distinguish things, and yeah, you're good to go. So, if you find any more helpful tips and tricks, please send them my way. Heaven knows I could use them, or if you got any questions, hit me up. Maybe I can help you out. In the meantime, good luck out there.